this video, we're going to show you how to make a Bedrock dedicated Minecraft server. What that means, if you play Minecraft Bedrock on iOS, on Windows, or on Android, you'll be able to join this server and you'll have complete control over it. That means that you won't have to run it through a realm, you won't have to, you know, basically let your friend into your single player world, none of that stuff. This is a true Minecraft server for Bedrock Edition and we're going to be going over every single step of getting it in this video. I do want to mention up front though, you will need a Windows computer to host this server as well as that this is not a server that's meant for being public, right? It's only meant for your friends, your family, people that you trust. That's because it's hosted on your own network and your own hardware, meaning you're going to need decent hardware, you're going to need Windows hardware, it has to be a Windows computer, and it's hosted on your own IP address, meaning people who get this server can figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. They can also DDoS you all that stuff. However, what if you don't want any of that? Or what if you don't want some of it, right? What if you don't have a Windows computer? Or what if you don't want to host it on your network? Or what if you just don't have a great computer that's going to be able to run this server? Well, that's where our sponsor, a Apex Minecraft hosting comes in. Go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start your very own dedicated Minecraft Bedrock server. When you're going into your server versions, just search Bedrock on Apex and you'll be able to find the Bedrock dedicated server file. And that is what we're setting up in this video, except it's hosted on Apex, meaning you don't need a Windows computer to host on Apex. You don't have to worry about whether the server is public or private. You get to choose and it doesn't matter either way because it is safe and secure because Apex takes care of all of the security. Truly, it is the quickest and easiest way to start your Bedrock server. Much quicker much easier than this video and that's why we love having them as a sponsor because they solve the problem of getting your server in the quickest and easiest way possible. Again, you can check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to get your server up and running. However, what if you don't want to buy a server through Apex? What if you want to start a server yourself for free on your own computer? Well, let's go ahead and do that. First things first, we need to go to the second link down below and that's going to take you here. This is where you can download the Minecraft server software for Bedrock Edition. Now, this is still an alpha. However, I've not seen many bugs on these servers, but they could be present. When you're here, you want to find Windows Server server software for Windows. It's kind of weird how it repeats this, but nevertheless, this is where you want to come. You want to agree to the EOLA, assuming you do agree to it. We do. So go ahead and click that little tick box there and then go ahead and click on download. It will then start downloading. This is 100% safe to download because guess what? This is from Minecraft.net, the official Minecraft website for forgetting Minecraft. So nevertheless, you can see Bedrock server has downloaded in the bottom left and we can go ahead and minimize our browser. We then need to get the file we downloaded to our desktop. To do that, it's going to be found in your downloads folder. Click on the little Windows icon on the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom of your screen and in the center of your screen on Windows 11. And yes, this does work on Windows 11. Click on that little Windows icon, type in downloads. You have this downloads file folder here. Open that up and in here you'll find Bedrock Server. Drag this to your desktop just for ease of use. Once this is on your desktop, we want to go ahead and right click on it and then click extract all. Then go ahead and click extract right like so and boom, it's going to create a folder right here on our desktop after a few seconds five seconds it says, but it's going to take a little longer than that, that will have all of the files we need to get our Bedrock server up and running in it. So let's go ahead and do a quick jump cut. I'll wait until this is finished and then we'll be good to go. So I didn't catch it, unfortunately, but the extraction is complete. And now we have a folder and the zip folder. We can delete the zip folder. We just need to keep the folder here on our desktop. Go ahead and open up this folder. And in here, you'll be able to see basically all the stuff that you need to start your Bedrock server. Most importantly, though, there's Bedrock underscore server dot exe. This right here is what you're gonna double click to get the server up and running. Now, if you do get this protected by Windows thing, it's perfectly fine. This is actually made by Minecraft, by Mojang. It's 100% safe to run. Just click more info and then go ahead and click run anyway. I don't know why they don't bypass that, like why they don't allow that, but they do. And I don't know why, but that's the thing. Nevertheless, we do want to make sure that both private and public are checked. We want to make sure both of these are checked here and then click on allow access. And if you don't get the Windows Defender pop up, don't worry about it. Nevertheless, here we are. We have our server console. This will actually look very familiar even to Java players, except that there's a little less information because there's just overall less information involved with starting a Bedrock server. It just starts up differently. However, it should look similar. At this point, your Bedrock server is actually live and you can double click on this how to .html here and oddly this will take you to this, right? And this is kind of like a general overview, but just know that you don't need this information. We're going over all of it in, your, in this video. However, on some systems, you will have issues joining it, even though your friends might not. And if that's the case, you can follow the tutorial here to fix that. But yeah, this is kind of just like a general setup thing, which is kind of cool that they do include it. And if you double click on that, it will open in your web browser. Something that is worth noting if you do have any issues. Comment down below though, if you do, you shouldn't. Nevertheless, once you're here, your server is live and you can actually join it, but we're going to go ahead and port forward so your friends can join the server. Let's go ahead and do that first. First, we want to go ahead and stop here. So to do that, you type STOP, stop, right like so, hit enter, and it will stop the server. Always stop your server that way or it will have issues. By the way, port forwarding is required for your friends to join. I have seen though, for some reason on Bedrock servers, it being required even for you to join it. So let's just go ahead and do that. 
the first thing we want to do is go ahead and get some information. That information can be found by opening up CMD. So let's go ahead and click that little Windows icon. Again, top left of my screen, bottom left of your screen, to another screen on Windows 11. Go ahead and type in CMD. You have this command prompt here. Open that up. And in here, what you want to type is IP CONFIG. IP config, exactly like that, and hit enter. And then when you hit enter, it's gonna open up this right like so. All we need from here is two numbers. We need our IPv4 address and our default gateway. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Notepad and make note of both of these, right? So we need our IPv4. And for me, that is 192.168.1.67. And then we also need .1.67. And then we also need our default gateway here. So let's go ahead and copy that over. So default gateway. Now, if you have two strings or two strings of numbers and letters under default gateway, you wanna get the one that's just numbers. So if you have default gateway and then next to it, you have like, F for any other letter or something other than a number, you don't want that one. You want the one that's under it. Below that, there'll be one that's just numbers. Go ahead and get that one. That's the one that we need. So go ahead and take that and copy it over here. In my case, that's 192.168.1.1. Oops, excuse me, .1.1, right like so. Now we can go ahead and close out a command prompt. It's time to port forward. To do this, we wanna go ahead and open up our browser. So here we are in our browser. And what we need to do is up here at the top, copy and paste the default gateway. So right up here where you would normally enter in a you know URL like youtube.com or the breakdown of XYZ, right up here at the top, you want to go ahead and paste in, right like so, your default gateway. When you do that and hit enter, it's going to go ahead and open up a login box right like so. Yours may be completely different from mine. Mine pops in from the top, yours may in the center of your screen, maybe in a pretty graphical user interface, it may pop up from the bottom, but you're going to get some sort of login box. What do you enter in here? Well, your router's username and password, which is going to be different from your like Wi-Fi password or something like that. To find your router username and password, in the description down below, we have this in-depth guide on how to find your router password. Start with method one and go through method five, and you'll be able to find it. Most people find it by method three, by the way. And then once you've got that, you can come back over to your router and log in, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'll see you after a quick jump cut. Here we are logged into my router. I actually believe it is uh, still loading. There we go. Here we are logged into my router. Now your router's probably gonna look completely different from mine, but guess what? That's a-okay because we have an in-depth guide on how to port forward on any router in the description down below. This goes through all the top routers out there today and it just goes through everything that you can do with port forwarding and even if your specific router isn't mentioned, guess what? There's probably a similar router in this tutorial. So that's why I recommend just watching it all the way through, picking up all the different methods, all the different words, all the different terms that port forwarding can be. Then when you go into your router, you're gonna be good to go. So nevertheless, we move back to our router here and what we're looking for is port forwarding. For me, that is in advanced. For you, it could be an advanced advanced. It could be an admin. It could be in advanced admin, it could be an advanced administration, it could be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming, it could be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding, it could be in security, it could also be in apps and gaming. For me in an old router, it was in security and apps and gaming. On this router, it's in advanced, and then it's in advanced again, and then it's port forwarding slash port triggering. Once we found it though, it's gonna have something that looks similar to this. You probably uh, won't have it, this right here. So let me go ahead and delete that. Yours will probably be blank, but it might just be like a big long list of text boxes. You may also have to click like add a port forward, which we actually have to do. We have to add, add a custom service here. When I click on that, this is where things are gonna look similar to you in some way. You'll have these sort of boxes for stuff to go in. So service name, you can name this whatever you want. This could also be called an ID. And this is gonna be Minecraft Bedrock. We're just saying, what is this for? Minecraft Bedrock. Then for protocol, we want to make sure TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both is selected. You want to make sure both of these are selected. If you can't select both, you can only select one. Do this twice. Everything else is the same except once for TCP and once for UDP. You may also have to change your, your, your ID, right? You might have to do a different ID. That's fine. Nevertheless, once you've got that, we need to move on to port. And anything involving the word port at all is going to be 19132. And this is different for Bedrock from Java. So if you came from Java, that's going to be like, what? 19132 is the port for Bedrock. So for external port, guess what? It said the word port. So 19132. For internal port, hey, there's that word port again. It needs to be 19132. Anything involving the word port at all is going to be 19132. From there, we need to select our internal IP address. This could also be listed as your local IP address or your local IPv4 address. Well, guess what it is? The IPv4 address we found earlier. In my case, 192.168.1.67. Yours could be completely different, and if it is, that's okay. However, you may also have a drop-down box of devices. If that's the case, select the computer you're starting the server on, 
from that drop down box. Finally, go ahead and click apply and you're good to go. You have now port forwarded for your Bedrock server. The most important thing is that the internal or local IP address is the same as your computer and that the port is 19132. From there, we need to go ahead and get our public IP address because that's how our friends and us can join the server. To do that, we're gonna to go to the link in the description down below, what's my IP address? It's down below, and this is your public IP address. Once you're here, you wanna copy it. Now for me, you can only see 103, the last three digits, because we just wanna show you that I'm using the same one once we get into Minecraft as you're seeing here. Everything else is blacked out, but as you can see, you can see your country, region, city, state, latitude, longitude, coordinates can all be seen here. And that's why it's so important to only give this out to people you trust, right? If you give this out to everybody, it's not a good idea. So nevertheless, we can go ahead and copy that and we can come back over here to our port forward. By the way, sometimes you'll need an outside or external IP. That's gonna be this public IP address. Then we can minimize our browser and close out of this file here. We don't really need it anymore. We then wanna go ahead and fire up our Bedrock server. To do that, just double click on that server.exe. It's gonna open up right like so. And then we also wanna go ahead and make sure that we open up Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now, I'm gonna open it up directly. You can open this up via the Minecraft launcher as well. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna do a quick jump cut. I will meet you in game once I have uh, these things better organized and we're gonna join the server. So here we are in game. As you can see, I am logged in to a account, an Xbox Live account. I don't know if that's required. I would guess it would be. Uh, so much is happening, Lord. <laughs> Whenever I feel like that's one of the things I don't like about Bedrock Edition. When you join in, so much happens. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and click play here. And then we wanna go over here to servers. Now I might already have a server added. I don't, that's good. So once you're here, you wanna go to play and then at the top, you wanna to click on servers. Then you wanna scroll down on the left-hand side to the very, very bottom and click on add server. Now you can name this whatever you want. I was gonna name it my server here. And then the server address is going to be that public IP address we got earlier. Again, the only thing you can see is 103 at the end, just to show you we're using the same as before. The port, this is what we had earlier and it's gonna be 19132 because that's the default port for Bedrock servers and that's what we used. You can then go ahead and click save and it will save the server on the left-hand side here. It's then gonna go ahead and kind of load into it. As you can see, dedicated. If we click on it, it is online. We can join the server. You'll see it pop in on the left-hand side here and we're good to go awesome stuff. There we go. Now, like I said, some cases you can't join this via your public IP or you can't join your server from the same computer you're hosting the server on. If that's the case, try it on another device like an iPhone, like Minecraft, you know, Pocket Edition or something like that. That can join into this server. Same IP address we used, same port, everything like that can join right on into this server. However, if you do have issues, if you go into this how-to file that we were talking about earlier, which I need to go ahead and open up in Chrome here, you'll be able to see that if this is an issue, here's what you can do. On some systems, you wish to connect to your server, running a client at the same machine, as long as the server is running on, you would need to exempt the Minecraft client from UP loopback descriptions. Basically, just go ahead and copy and paste this into command prompt and it will fix it. And again, you can find this in that server directory right here. Nevertheless, thank you so, so much for watching. That is how to create a Bedrock Minecraft server in 2022. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. And don't forget the easiest way to start one of these servers is with Apex Minecraft hosting. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your server and I am out. Peace.